Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be on soldier or soldiers. Now, I was in the Army. Uh, I didn't do anything extraordinary. I was uh, a little bit too young to go to Vietnam, but I joined the Army just before the ending of the Vietnam War, and I enlisted to go to Germany. Because I figured, if I went to Germany, well, you know, uh, get to see what I thought was the roots of my heritage and uh, get to try some good beer, right? Uh, one of the biggest problems I had when I went to Germany, and I had some time off, which wasn't very often, they kept me busy, was uh, deciding, hmm, do I want to drink German wine or do I want to drink German beer? Hmm, that was like my biggest decision back then. Well, one of them. But, uh, but I'll tell you what. The life of a soldier is not an easy one. I mean, you're separated from your family. And, you know, Christ wants us to be separated from our physical family and to be joined to our heavenly family. And then you've got a physical war, and then you've got the spiritual war. And being a soldier entails giving up many, many things and comforts. So when the Bible talks about being a soldier, there is a physical application to a spiritual way of life, I guess you could put it. So with that in mind, let's get going. All right, uh, either get a King James Bible or you can go to the Blue Letter Bible, go to Google, hit Blue Letter Bible, or hit uh, the King James Bible online.org and then just type, you know, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. We're going to read a few chapters there, and you can read along with me. Uh, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You know, and that's, when you're a soldier, you're going to endure hardness. Um, I imagine not a lot of you ladies listening have military experience I mean, I know they. I know there's some of you that do, but uh, generally it's man, men that get to uh, have all the fun in the military. And I'm being extremely uh, sarcastic there. Uh, so, but we were there. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. So, if you're going to be a soldier in war, you don't want to become entangled with the, you know, the, the affairs of uh, this world. So that he can please him who chose him to be the soldier, right? Verse 5. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. So there's a right way to do battle, 
spiritual. And there's a wrong way to do battle. Now let's take a look at something. In Matthew chapter 8 and verse 7, somebody came to Jesus and said that uh, there's a centurion and his servant is sick and dying. Now it could have been the centurion or it could have been one of his servants. I'm not sure and I don't want to go back and look at it, but I, I got the important part right here. Matthew chapter 8, verse 7. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. Wow. Verse 8. I think it was the centurion that told him this. The centurion answered and said, Lord. Now remember, the centurion acknowledged Jesus and called him Lord. He said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Wow. So he called him Lord. He admitted his, he wasn't worthy. And he knew that all Jesus had to do was say the word, and that was it. He was healed. He didn't have to walk to his house and touch him and or any of those stuff. No, just speak the word. He says, for I am a man under authority. You see, when you're in the military, let's take the United States military, for example. The president is considered the commander-in-chief, or at least used to be. And it used to be that Congress would declare war, but that was back in the days when we actually followed the Constitution. And then you had the general of the army, five-star general, of which there was only one. And then you had other generals. And then under those generals, I mean, you had different units. You had army units. And under that, you would have colonels. And under the colonel, Colonels, you would have major, and then under the major, you would have captains, and then under them, you would have lieutenants, and then under them, you would have the sergeants, and then under them, you would have the corporals, and then the grunts, the privates. There's a chain of command, of which the president's the top and the private is the bottom. And that's how it works. But in the days of Rome, you had the Caesar, and then you had the Senate, and then I don't know how the Roman uh, power structure was in the army, but I imagine it's very similar. If I remember correctly, a centurion was an officer, not just a mere soldier, because he says, I have, you know, he has authority, right? He says, for I am a man under authority having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another, come, and he cometh, and to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. See, Jesus was under authority, too, of God the Father. Oh, yeah. So, you know, think about that. And the Holy Spirit was under the authority of God the Father and Jesus. Think about that. All right, so let's take a look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 23. Him, therefore, I hope to send presently, so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. But I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. Yet I supposed it necessary to send to you Epiroditus. Boy, I'll tell you what. I don't know how to pronounce these Greek words. Uh, Epiroditus. 
wrote this, I don't know, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier. Ah, a fellow soldier. My brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that uh, ministereth, I'm sorry, and he that ministered to my wants. So here it is. Now remember, Jesus said that um, he that would be greatest among you would be your servant. So here it is. You got somebody. He's ministering to Paul. And Paul is ministering to everybody else. Unless, of course, you believe those Hebrew Roots people that hate Paul. Which, when you hear those people, I think you should run. Don't, uh, don't walk away. Run. Philemon, chapter 1, verse 2. And to our beloved Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. Ah, there was a church. It was a house church. And to the church in thy house. Have you ever heard people say, oh, hey, uh, Oh, you're a Christian too. Hey, you want to come to our church on Sunday? You want to go to church? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I think you're confused. Oh, uh, uh, what do you mean? You don't go to church. Nobody goes to church. We are the church. You can go to the car, but you're not the car. We are the the church. You don't go to church. The church is not a building. The church is not a 501c3 IRS approved, tax exempt, state chartered business or corporation. Sorry, we are the church. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. That's the church. And it was at a house. So keep that in mind. All right. Uh, Ephesians. Ephesus. The church at Ephesus. The Ephesians. Chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Wow, did you know God supplies us with armor? Really, he does. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Oh boy, that applies today just as it has for 1900 years. For 1900 years, this is always applied. Spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, it's been very, very rare when there was a godly king or a godly government. Very, very rare. I wonder if it's even 10% of the time. I mean, England had a few good kings. Europe had a few good kings. America had a few good statesmen, but uh, I sure can't say that today. Nope. Sorry. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Wow, the evil day. Does that sound like today? I think so. That ye may be, be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. We're supposed to stand our ground. We're not supposed to turn tail and run. Uh, let's take a look at something real quick. All right. Um, you know where the Bible says to make a joyful noise unto the Lord? Well, that's what we're going to do. I remember one of my favorite hymns when I was young was Onward Christian Soldiers. Onward Christian Soldiers Marching as to war With the cross of Jesus Going on before So, what is the what do the churches sing today? I think this is it. Backward Christian Zionists running from the war with the star of David loving Babylon whore. I know, don't give up my uh, day job for a singing career. But uh, actually, I used to be in... Uh, chorus class back in uh, first year of high school before my my uh, voice changed I actually had a decent voice back then oh well all right yeah I know I'll never replace Elvis and if you remember Elvis you're old all right back to the Bible Ephesians 6. Verse 13, yeah, whatever happened to onward Christian soldiers? Now we're backward Christian Zionists. Ugh. All right, let's do... Verse 13, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. So we're supposed to have our loins girt about with truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Now what does the breastplate cov cover? your heart your heart should be covered with righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith wherewith ye may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation. What does the helmet cover? Your head, your mind. The hope of salvation. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. What's the sword of the Spirit? The Word of God. Praying always with prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Um, I forget who it was, which one of you told me about it, but uh, the word saints uh, comes from the same word as holy i i i didn't know that and i saw the um 
There were, I didn't even know there was saints in the Old, Old Testament. Well, I'm, I mean, I know there was Old Testament saints. Don't get me wrong. I understood that. But I didn't know the word saints appeared in the Old Testament, even though I've read it many times. Well, a, a number of times. Once or twice. But um, I didn't remember. It's like every time I do a Bible study, I find something new. And uh, those of you that comment, I, believe me, I try to read everybody's comment if if Tube lets me know it's there because I learn a lot of stuff from comments, not just this channel, but other people's channels too. But uh, Saints is in the uh, the Old Testament, and it comes from the root word for holy also. But then when you go to the New Testament, it also the word saints comes from uh, the root word from holy, as in separated, segregated, set apart, sanctified. Um, you know, I thought, wow, that, that would make a good uh, Bible study. But, um, you know, the saints have to be holy. Think about it, you know. Praying always with prayer and supplications in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me that utterance may be given unto me that i may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel huh All right, so the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. What did Jesus do after his baptism by John in the River Jordan? And then the Holy Spirit descended upon him as a dove. What happened? Well, let's go to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Now, if Jesus is tempted of the devil, you better believe that you and me and everybody else who are, you know, if, 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 if you are children of the Lord, you're going to be tempted of the devil. If you're one of the devil's kids, you don't have to worry about it because you're already one of his kids. Verse 2. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written. Ah, Satan tried to uh, mis mis misuse scripture. And what did Jesus do? He answered him. He's answering him with scripture. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. And saith unto him, if thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. And that, those kingdoms must have paled in comparison to heaven for where Christ came down from, you know? Think about it. Streets of gold, doors of ivory. Yeah. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, 
Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Oh yeah, it is written. Sounds like a good plan, you know? All right, so... Now, if you notice something, the Bible said to stand. It didn't say to turn tail, turn your back, and run. And if you'll notice something, the only part that's not really protected of the armor of God is the back. And if you turn tail and run, your back is unprotected. Think about that. So, supposed to face the enemy. Face the enemy. Not what the churches are doing. They're standing next to the enemy because they are the enemy, if you ask me. All right. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. But of the times... And the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Oh, by the way, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at uh, the shield, the breastplate, the helmet, the sword, uh, in the spiritual sense of the things we just read. We're gonna cover that a little bit. I'm getting there. So in First Thessalonians chapter five, but of the times and of the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light. And the children of the day, we are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep, as do others, all right, spiritually sleeping, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. What does the breastplate cover? Your chest, your heart. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love. What did Jesus say the two great commandments were? Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. Bingo. The breastplate of faith and love. And for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. Well, guess what? There's a difference between judgment. I think it was Paul that said that judgment, no, it was Peter. It was Peter. Peter said that judgment begins at the house of God. Judgment begins at the house of God. There's a difference between judgment and wrath. Tell that to the pre-trib rapture churches, because they don't understand that. They just don't get it. Well, they probably do, but, you know, passing that collection plate around is far more important than uh, teaching the truth. After all, they got a church building mortgage to, to support, you know. And, and that Cadillac or Mercedes Benz that the pastor drives, I mean, you know, the insurance is expensive. Yeah. So, got to pass that collection plate. I was in, uh, working in Knoxville, Tennessee, and uh, went to a I guess you could say a Pentecostal, charismatic, full gospel church, whatever you want to call it. I kind of like the teaching there. It's kind of, you know, 
Um, you go to a Baptist church and they're screaming, you got to get saved, you're going to hell. You know, I mean, it's like every week was the same thing. You know, it's like in six months of going to this church, if you haven't been saved, you probably never will. I mean, really? So I was going to a full gospel church and, uh, you know, they must have passed that collection plate at around at least seven to 10 to 12 times. I mean, seriously. Oh, here's the building fund. Uh, here's the uh, missionary fund. Here's the church general fund. Here's for the sick sister. Here's for the sick brother. Here's for this. This is for that. Uh, this is for the education fund. I'm like, really? I'm like, wow. I mean, you know, can, can you pass it around one more time? I've still got a couple of dollars left in my pocket. I mean, really? Yeah. And all those Old Testament laws were done away with. They were nailed to the cross, except for that tithe law. Will ye rob God? And you people know what I'm talking about, I'm sure. Most of you. Anyway, so. All right. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what is all this about salvation? And, you know, what is salvation? And, and righteousness, what is that? Well, we're going to look at Paul. Guess what? Paul talks about that stuff and explains it very well. We're going to hit the Romans road. Romans 1.17, For therein is the righteousness of God. Not my righteousness. Uh-uh. My righteousness is garbage. It's worse than smelly, weak old fish that's been sitting out in the Florida sun in the summer. For therein is the righteousness of God, revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Romans 3.22, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Romans 4.3, for what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Galatians 3, 6, Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. I know I've said it before. I went to college for a couple years. Not Bible college. I went to Bible college too, but I went to uh, Palm Beach State College. What is now Palm Beach State College? Back in the day, it was Palm Beach Junior College for two years. And um, one thing I learned in school, well, a couple things. One, I learned how to do research. I had a professor, one of my first professors in college, and he, I think it was a he, yeah, it was a he, I'm pretty sure, said, if you don't learn anything else going to college, he says, you'll learn how to do research. And he was right. And this was the days before the internet. You know, I had to go to the library and look things up. Um, I learned how to do that well, and, um, you know, and then the internet came along uh, 20 years ago when you did research on the internet. It was great. Now they're hiding everything. It's garbage. Um, if I'm looking up controversial subject, if I go to Google, Google, I'll uh, start on page four because I know the first three pages are garbage, lies. But uh, the second thing I learned quite by accident was that if a teacher said something two or three times it was important and it would be on the test and guess what Paul said this twice even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness so our righteousness is believing God 
That's going to be on the test, people. God's test. Do you believe God? I do. I don't always act like it. I mean, some, you know, there's there's a Bible verse that says, lean not to your own understanding. Some, you know, sometimes I'm a hypocrite. I try not to be, but, you know, sometimes I am. All right, how about we go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, 22. 2 Timothy 2, 22. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity. Now that word charity, excuse me, sometimes that same word is translated as love. And uh, there's two Greek words for love that I know of, that I remember. I mean, you got to remember some. I took, you know, I went to Bible college like 15 years ago. Uh, and they taught us agape and phileo, which is where they get the word for Phil Philadelphia. Phileo and agape. And they tell you, well, that means this and that means that. But they're very similar in meaning. I mean, if, when you look at them, at all the places they're in the Bible and you read them all, I can't tell the difference between them. I can't tell the difference between them. I mean, they're kind of used sort of sometimes interchangeably. It's been a long time since I've done the study. There might be nuances to differences, but, you know, there's a romantic love between a man and a woman, and then there's a, a brotherly love between, like, King David and uh, Jonathan, Saul's son. I mean, those two... I think King David loved Jonathan more than his own brothers. I really do. Um, and no, they weren't sodomites. You got people today that teach that Jonathan and David were sodomites. May those people enjoy their uh, warm trip to the pit. That's all I can say. And uh, I hope they don't have any asbestos underwear. Deceivers. I'm, there's so many deceivers in the world. You know, I know one day, one day I'm going to have to give an account to the Lord every word that I've ever said. And uh, I'm sure not going to teach false stuff on purpose. I might do it by accident, or I might be ignorant. You know, I really didn't want this job. Trust me. And this job pays really p bad. You know, this job pays terrible. I'm a volunteer, okay? Volunteers. I'm not a professional. Professionals get paid. When you hire a, a professional musician, they get paid. Okay? When you hire a professional actor, they get paid. Professional truck driver, they get paid. Me, I'm a volunteer. Just remember, you get what you pay for. Yeah. But I would like to think that I'm doing the work of the Lord and uh, treasures in heaven. What can I tell you? All right. Second Timothy 2.2.2. Two, two. It says, Flee all foe useful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity. Charity sometimes translated as love. Okay? You know, if you have love, you'll have charity. If you have charity, it's because you have love. It's kind of interchangeable. Uh, the love chapter, it's in uh, Corinthians. I've read that chapter dozens of times at weddings. Dozens of times. Very popular. And I was very honored to read that at people's weddings. But follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. Oh yeah, there's holy scriptures. And there's unholy scriptures. You want unholy scriptures? Get the uh, 
complete Jewish Bible. Get the NIV. Um, get the Queen, Queen, Q, with a Q, Queen James Bible. Yeah. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Ah. Verse 16. All scripture... All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. I've had people tell me, oh, doctrine's not important. Really? Who is Jesus is not important? Really? Well, maybe it's not important to you, but it is important to me. And it's important to Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for proof, reproof, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Wow, we're supposed to do good works. Tell that to the people that scream Lordship Salvation. Oh, you're trying to earn your salvation by doing good works. Tell those people to go to hell for me, please. Because they don't understand grace. They really don't. Tell them to read James chapter 2. But we're going to read James chapter 3, starting in verse 16. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Sounds like the devil's playground, doesn't it? Verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits. Sorry, we're not talking about ripe apples here. No. No. Good fruits. They're talking about works, people. Full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Huh. Uh, let's take a look at something real quick here. Now, um, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So, now in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, sorry, I don't think we're supposed to go to a priest and doing confession and then bragging about all our sins. Oh yeah, Father, last week I cheated on my wife three times with three different prostitutes, and boy, they were, you know, yeah. Uh, that's, not con that's not confessing your sins. No, that's, that's bragging. You know, forgive me, Father, for I've sinned, uh, you know, save 20 Hail Marys and throw $500 in the collection plate and, you know, uh, for, I forgive you, son. No, 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 no. That's, that's not, uh, I don't think so. Maybe, you know, maybe the Catholics think so, but I don't. So when you confess your sins, that doesn't mean, oh boy, I did three, three prostitutes last week. No, no. Confessing your sins is, Lord, I'm sorry I slipped up. I, it won't happen again, to the best of my ability. Confessing your sins and then turning away from those sins. You know, that's, that's what he wants. Boy, Jesus talked about repentance. 
John the Baptist talked about repentance. Very important. But that's not what this study is all about. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All right, so let's talk about this shield. Remember they were talking about the shield? Uh, taking on, you know, the shield, the breastplate, the armor of God. Let's, let's talk about the shield. Turn to Deuteronomy 33 and verse 29. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee. O people saved, O people saved by the Lord. I always hear people say, oh, the Old Testament is just a bunch of laws and, and wrath. And, you know, what? You've never read it, have you? People that say that stuff. It says, oh, people saved by the Lord. See, there was salvation in the Old Testament. The Bible says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Grace. There's grace in the Old Testament. You know, these people, they don't know any better. It's because of their, their these so-called pastors and preachers and their priests. They're fleecing the flock, not feeding the flock. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help. The shield of thy help. The Lord is the shield of thy help. And who is the sword of thy excellency? And thy enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. Second Samuel, Second Samuel 22 and verse 3. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield. The Lord, he is my shield and the horn of my salvation. My high tower and my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. Wow, people say, oh, there's no salvation in the Old Testament? Really? 2 Samuel 22, verse 36. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy gentleness hath made me great. Let's read a Psalm of David. Psalms 3, 3. But thou, O Lord art a shield for me. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of mine head. Psalms 5.12 For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor, wilt thou compass him as with a shield. Huh. Psalms 18.35 Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand hath holden me up, and thy gentleness hath made me great. Psalms 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusteth in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. Good thing I'm not singing, huh? After all that, you had to uh, endure a while back. Oh, yeah. Psalms 84.11 For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. That's S-U-N, sun in the sky. And what does the sun in the sky do? Gives us light, right? For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace, grace and glory no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Boy, I needed that verse. Uh, not that I'm worthy of it, 
but I need to walk uprightly. Don't we all? Proverbs 30, verse 5. Every word of God is pure. Uh, tell that to the modern-day Bible bashers and Bible correctors. They don't believe that. They think every word of God needs to be poured over and compared to faulty manuscripts and argue endlessly over what words belong in the Bible and what words need to be corrected and changed. Nah, people. The Lord said, well, Proverbs, King Solomon, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, said, every word of God is pure. He is a shield. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Psalms 33, 4. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. Now remember, we were supposed to gird our loins with truth, remember? And peace. Romans 12 and verse 18. If, a big I-F, if, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Live peaceably with all men. Boy, I'll tell you what, there are some people that make that very, very, very difficult. Romans 7, I'm sorry, Romans 14 and verse 17. For the kingdom of heaven is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Yeah, that sounds like that false apostle Paul, doesn't it? Oh yeah, that's what they want us to believe. Yeah. You know what? Those, those Hebrew roots people that hate Paul... They're devils. I mean, you know, there's no way around it. You know, when people start spouting to me, I don't care how long they've listened to me on a channel. You don't, you don't get Paul? I, I block them. I, I just don't want to hear their nonsense. I'll deal with them two or three times, and then after that, you know. Paul warns so much. He explains so many things. And I'll admit, sometimes he's not easy to understand. Um, and I don't have, I don't claim to have everything figured out. There's a lot of stuff I don't understand. That's why I try to, the stuff I kind of do understand. I was thinking about doing a, a, a study on Ezekiel, but I'll be honest. And, and Daniel, I, I don't understand them well enough to do a, a Bible study on it. I don't. Book of Revelation, there's a few chapters I get pretty well but there's some chapters i don't know we won't we probably won't know until they happen and then we'll you know under if the lord wills he'll show you via his spirit uh what's going on for the kingdom of god is not meat and drink but righteousness and peace and joy joy in the holy ghost hebrews 12:14 Follow peace with all men. Follow peace with all men and holiness. Holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. And our holiness and righteousness is in Christ, in our faith. That's, that's the name of that tune, people. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, uh, that means entire or completely, um, not H-O-L-Y, but W-H-O-L-L-Y. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body 
be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul says you've got a spirit, a soul, and a body. Three parts is one person. Body, soul, and spirit. And guess what? God made man in his image. So why can't there be Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? And if somebody doesn't understand this concept, they shouldn't be teaching. I mean, really. I mean, I've spent countless hours studying. I mean, the Bible even says, study to show thyself approved unto God. Um, unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And of course, you're dispensational, I mean, uh, dispensational uh, people will mis misuse that to tell you that uh, there's all these different time periods in the Bible. There's only, two, there's only two dispensations in the Bible, the Old and the New, the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, the Old Testament and the New Testament. That's it. You know, and they actually teach that after the pre-trib rapture, that you have to follow the law to get saved. So I guess, you know, when the Antichrist comes and starts doing animal sacrifices to him, I guess you're going to have to get a lamb or a sheep or a goat or whatever and go and sacrifice it so that you can be saved. I mean, really? And then you got to die for your faith. I mean, they teach this nonsense. Really, they do. There's only one... There's only one gospel and that's christ and his blood alone his death burial and resurrection that's the gospel there's not two gospels there's not one for the gentiles and another for the jew there's not one before the church age and then another during the tribulation period no there's only there's only one door and that's christ period and I went to Bible, one of their Bible colleges. You know why? Because I wanted to learn what they taught so that I could refute it. They teach this stuff. You know? I mean, 10% uh, poison. Although there was a few good things in the Bible college. There was a few good things. You know? But... Uh, it's terrible. Some of the garbage that they teach. If you want to believe the Antichrist are God's chosen, well, they are God's chosen, but for not for uh, what most church people think. Um, <laughs> they're, the tares that are going to be thrown into the lake of fire, that's, that's what they're chosen for. You know, you reject Christ and you're out of here, buddy. So, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2. Grace unto you and peace, peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians 3, 16. Now the Lord of peace himself gave, uh, give you peace Always, by all means, the Lord be with you all. The Lord be with you all. You didn't know Paul was a Southerner, huh? And people don't, come on. You know, I'm not mocking Southerners. I was born in Kentucky. And if you check, and if you check, uh, Flor uh, Kentucky was part of the Confederacy during the, uh, yeah, the Civil War. And it was not about slavery. No, it was about state rights. And trust me, I wish slavery had never happened in this country. I, I really, really, really wish that uh, no slave ships had ever dropped off any slaves on the shores of this country. Trust me, there's very few people that probably hated slavery as much as I did, or do. So, 1 Timothy 1-2, Unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace mercy and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord John 16 33 
These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye may have peace, in, that ye may have peace. You see, in Christ ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, trouble. Oh yeah. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me, Christ, ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Matthew 5, 9. Jesus says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. 2 Samuel 22, verse 3. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my high tower, my refuge, my Savior. Thou savest me from violence. I know we read it before, but like uh, my college professor said, when something was read, uh, when something was mentioned, well, I learned that when something was mentioned more than once, write it down, it's going to be on the test. Psalms 3.8, Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Selah. Psalms 116 and verse 13. Listen to this. I will take the cup, the cup of salvation. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. What did Jesus say at the Last Supper when he took the bread and he took the cup of the wine? Luke 22:20. 20. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament. Excuse me. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Keep that in mind. You know, people, there's so much hints in the Old Testament of salvation and grace and mercy. And people just don't look for it. That's why they don't see it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Now, what did the, you know, the Bible talked, uh, when it talked about the, um, taking on the armor of God and having the sword. You know, we talked about uh, your feet shod with peace, your loins with uh, truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation. How about the sword? Oh, yeah. That's going to be one of the probably the most important thing in the arsenal of a soldier, the sword. Matthew 10, 32. Jesus said, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever, but whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace on earth but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And there is another place in the Bible that says that a man's foes, his enemies, that a man's foes would be they of his own household. That's right. We're in a spiritual war, people. Christ didn't come to send peace on earth, at least not the first time. He came not to send peace, but a sword. And what is that sword? The Word of God. Hebrews 4.12 For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Why a two-edged sword? Because it cuts both ways. Oh, yeah. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, 
piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Wow. The word of God divides the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And what's where's the marrow located? The marrow is located inside your bones. Do you know that the uh, inside of your bones produces your blood? And the Bible says the life is in the blood. Oh yeah. Something I learned in college. Probably biology. Can you believe I remember this stuff back in the 80s? Ugh. Revelation chapter 1 of verse 16. And he, Jesus, and he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And I'm sorry, there's not a, an actual sword coming out of the mouth of Christ. It's the word of God. It's a figure of speech, people. People just, I don't know, they just don't get it. Not that I always get it. All right. Um, let's see. Revelation 19, verse 15. And out of his mouth, Christ, goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, not a feather, not a tickle stick, but a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath, not judgment, wrath of Almighty God. Revelation 19.21 and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, with which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. See, people, the word of God is going to judge people. And like we just read in Hebrews 4.12, it's going to divide asunder the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. It's going to cut you to pieces uh, well, maybe not, not those of you that are in Christ, but those that are not in Christ, it's going to cut them to pieces, spiritually and physically. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. And here's the punchline. Revelation 19 and verse 8. Now remember, this is those that are in Christ, the church, Israel, his people, those that are in Christ, filled with, you know, faith and salvation, righteousness, holiness. Revelation 19 and verse 8, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints wow the fine linen is the righteousness of saints that's going to be the clothing of those that make it into the kingdom of the lord so and it's not going to be our righteousness it's going to be our faith in the Lord and his righteousness. Remember that, people. I hope sincerely that you learned something. And all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to them and them alone. In Jesus' precious name, amen.